Hey everybody, and welcome to the latest episode of The Rock Experience with Mike Brunn. On this episode, I'm really excited and honored to have with me legendary Night Ranger drummer and vocalist, Kelly Keggy. He will talk with me all about Night Ranger's newest album coming out this week, as well as some of the good old days. I think you guys are going to really enjoy this episode, so let's jump in and let's get started. So first off, I just want to say congratulations on the upcoming release of ATBO, right? The band's, I think, 13th album, right? It must be exciting for you. Um, do you still get excited about the new album releases? I mean, uh, yeah, we, we weren't uh, really thinking about it, but when we had all this time off last year, we were like, well, what are we going to do? Just sit around and watch series, you know, or, <laughs> or whatever. So we uh, we decided to do it. And, uh, you know, it's about, about six months and into that year we started to put songs together and just over the internet and that kind of stuff clips on the phone and what do you think of this and it was just like it was so bad but we <laughs> but we you know, we made it work so you know that's the thing is we just wanted to to move ahead and uh you know create some new stuff you know well you know to that point you know i'm gonna say a lot of classic rock fans don't necessarily put out new material, but this is Night Ranger's fourth album in the last 10 years. What what drives you guys to still put out new music? I mean, we can't just sit around and just play the old stuff live. And, you know, like when we go out, at, you know, on on uh, and do dates, you know, we, we want to put something exciting in there, something new and just, so that's why we do it. And, you know, we just love writing songs together and, and uh, you know, creating because, you know, that's what bands do if they like playing together. You know? Without a doubt. So now, I mean, the band's been around for 30 plus years, right? Do you think it's more or less stress putting out an album today, right? Obviously, you don't have the pressure from the record company to try to do a top 10 single. <clears throat> I did it for love. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> right? but at the same time, <laughs> at, the same time <laughs> at the same time, <laughs> Oh, uh, that's great. At the same time, do you feel any pressure to live up to like Dawn Patrol, Seven Seven Wishes, Midnight Madness, etc.? Not that so much. We just the pressure is to still write good songs and still create those those nice choruses that we like. So that's all it is, you know. I mean, you know, and and uh, Serafino at Frontiers, you know, he he always weighs in on. I like this song. I don't know about this, you know, and. Yeah, it needs to be AOR, you know, ready. And he, he uses that term AOR, like, like we still have albums, you know. Right. But yeah, actually, we're re releasing some uh, some vinyl in the last couple albums. But, but yeah, that's the pressure is just on ourselves, you know. Yeah. Now, I mean, how do you determine success in 2021? So it used to be in the 80s, platinum, double platinum, that was success. Now everybody's streaming music. How do you determine success? I mean. You know, it's it's just about our hardcore fans. So if they're happy with it, then we've done our job. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, I mean, it is it is all about us, but it's all about them because they're the reasons why we're here. So that's really it. You know? Right, without doubt. So um, to that point, the band's already released two videos from this album, right? Bring It All Home To Me and um, Breakout. So talk about doing those videos. Oh, man. We went out to the, uh, uh, by Palm Springs, there's this place that's kind of like the land that time forgot, you know. <laughs> it's called the Salton Sea. And the and the videographer said, you know, we got to try this place. You know, it's really like, it's like, you know, from the past, you know. And I remember as a kid uh, growing up in L.A., I grew up 
watching these commercials that talked about come to the Salton Sea, <laughs> you know, and it was supposed to be this vacation place and there's a lake out there and, you know, but it, it didn't turn out to be that great because it had some weirdness that came with it. Like, you know, it had the farmers out there in, in, in the middle of California and the water would run off and the water wasn't safe anymore. This is what I heard from the history when we were out there. But then, but the whole idea was to make these videos in a really weird place out in the, you know, the desert's always a great place, but when you have these old, you know, uh, cars that are painted like, you know, uh, Deglo purple right. and, you know, right. and, and all this stuff, it was like, that's a great background. You'll never find it in LA. You never find it anywhere. So, so we thought this is great. You know, we got a hold of the owner that owned the property around there. And so we went out there and did it. It was really cool. Yeah. Now, one of the things I love about the videos is that it has that live feel to it. You know, you guys are performance and you keep that classic night range uh, stage setup. You off on the side, Eric off on the other side, the rest of the guys weird. in the middle. So I've heard Jack, I've heard Brad say that you guys did that setup to kind of open up the stage when you were a supporting band. That's As right. the drummer and the singer, were you like, hey, I want to face the crowd a little bit here. I want, you know, I wanted them to see me singing. Well, I, you know, I never even thought about it. The idea actually came from Alan Fitzgerald, our original keyboard player, because he, you know, we got asked to play some dates with Sammy Hagar. And he goes, he goes, you know, they got a car on stage and they got this and that. And, and he goes, there's not going to be any room. So maybe we got to think about doing something different. So he came up with the idea of like split the keyboard, split the drum platform. Kelly sings a few songs. They'll see him. You know, instead of like, you know, he, he kept re referring to the Eagles, you know, because it was like Don Henley was like this. Yeah. The symbol was like, <laughs> right, like this. You could see him doing it, but the symbol was right in his face. And it was uh, like, so let's true. don't do that, right. you know. Right. But, um, so that's that's really where the idea came. And I, you know, and I thought it was great because I could sing to the audience. They were right there. Mm -hmm. It made all the sense in the world. But, in, you know, in the beginning, I thought, ah, that's so weird. The drums? you know, be up front. That's just crazy. You know? But now it's so Night Ranger. And I love that you guys still carry forward into your videos like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Is there any talk of doing other videos from the album? Uh, probably not, you know, not at this point. We're just gonna, you know, we want the songs to get out there. You know, there might be a, a YouTube like lyric video, you know, uh, coming up with some of the other songs because we're going to release a couple more tunes, you know. So we want, you know, to to let the dust settle from the, you know, the, the August 6th and we'll see what happens, you know. Um, but, yeah, we want to get some more songs out there just because, we, you know, we have a bunch of songs that we, we love on the record, most of them. No, you know, heard a copy of the record and it's great. And, you know, one of the things I love about Night not only put out new material, but you've been playing it live for the last 10 years as well, every time an album comes out. So I know you guys have been doing Breakout over the last few shows. Any talk of adding some more new songs to the set list? Well, I mean, you know, we got uh, we got the two videos, of course. So we've been, uh, you know, rehearsed, uh, you know, the last song, uh, Bring It All Home to Me. And, and then there's a ballad that um, we might release too. So, uh, you know... Um, rehearsals are kind of weird because we're not in the same state together so it's good we're gonna have to wait until we can actually go okay let's let's focus on the next two songs so we haven't really decided which you know, ones are going to be yet so but we just want to concentrate on the first two releases you know that makes a lot of sense now do you have any favorites on the album again i heard some advanced copy of it dance monkey lucky man all great songs great great songs I mean, dance, dance was probably one of the first ones. Bring it all home to me was the first couple of songs, and and breakout was the actually the very last song that I cut after I cut most of the album. Then the next week I went back in because there were just instrumental tracks from Brad, breakout, and um, what was it, uh, savior. Okay. So those are the last two songs because there was no vocal. So we had to wait until we wrote the vocal and wrote something in there. So it was like, okay, um, you know, those songs were just instrumental. So I just, we don't have a vocal yet. So, you know, I, that's why I waited. So I went back in and cut them just instrumentally. But, um, yeah, I mean, you named it, you know, like I'm free. I mean, just, you know, like the, there's a couple ballads on the record that I thought were just amazing. Yeah. You know, um, so yeah, 
I mean, we we're really happy. I mean, we're happy we even made a record because <laughs> not ever getting in the room together and jamming was was a real pain in the ass. <laughs> you know, it's like how do you, how do you get on Zoom? Like right now, if I was if I had my guitar and Brad was on a, on a Zoom, as soon as he hits one chord, it just cuts off the audio and goes to him, right? right. And so it was like we could, we thought we could actually jam together. No way. You no, know? it just didn't work. So we had to go, okay, what's your idea on this song? We'd have to send the stuff ahead of time and everybody know what it was. It was just like, ah. Very different than what you've done for your previous 12 albums, right? Oh, yeah. We always get in the room together, write everything. Then we have the Pro Tools sessions be, you know, be sent around. Okay, this is the arrangement. And this is what we're going to do. These are the chord changes. Let's mess with the chorus, blah, blah, blah. All that technical work had to be done first. And then once we had the sessions, well, this was just, a, just the opposite. It was like, oh my God. You know? Now again, listening to the album, I thought the drum sound on the album was incredible. I thought it sounded really great. So how do you get those drum sounds? Well, this time I went to uh, Ken Mary's studio in Mesa, Arizona uh, to cut them because I was like, I can't uh, record. I just moved to a new place. So I can't record in it right now. I don't have it set up to like, you know, run all of my cables into the bedroom. You know, <laughs> that's what I did when I was in Tennessee for the last 15 years. Mm -hmm. I had a, a, a studio, a place to actually put up mics, have drums, record, you know, and, and control the computer with a, a, a long USB. Well, this time I didn't have that. So I just said, let's just have this great guy. I don't know if you know who Ken Mary is, but he played with Alice Cooper, okay. House of Lords amazing you know uh engineer producer and he had a great space um so we had god on our side because he he had the space was in this the in this in the back of these churches you know so i was like okay maybe this will work for us <laughs> so i went in there and he recorded i had rich uh richie russo our our uh, great tech has been with us for a lot long time and knows drum sounds and so i had a good team in there Went in there and recorded all the tracks with Ken Mary and Rich Russo. Yeah. Very cool. Now, I think one of the things I love that the bands did in, recently, in recent years, you guys did the uh, Midnight Madness, Dawn Patrol full album shows, right? So to me, that as a longtime fan, that gave me a chance to hear some of those deep cuts. You know, how do you balance playing? You know, Because you know you have casuals in the band that are in the crowd that are like, just play Don't Tell Me You Love Me, Sister Christian, we want to hear those. How do you balance that as a band? Well, I mean, it's frustrating because we wanted to keep going with all those deep tracks, and we do. You know, we bring back Why Does, Why Does Love Have to Change because that was a real highlight with great guitars, and I get to sing, you know, a, a good, a, a great lead vocal on there. You know, there's a really great melody that I just love, and, and, and you know, we never get to play that song. So we throw that one in there. We throw in, you know, um, call my name yep, you know great so song. so the first album first two albums actually had some really good nice deep deep tracks so um right now that we have a new album now we got to concentrate on getting those new songs in there so you know it depends on how long we play lately we've been doing festivals so it's only been like an hour you know so we have to right. play those recognizable songs of course, but, of course. Um, well as a long time yeah. fan i'm gonna hold out that i can still hear don't start thinking well, carry on. Those are my two of my favorite Night Ranger songs. Oh, my, amazing. I mean, I don't think we've ever played Carry On. I don't think so either. Not that I've ever heard. <laughs> That's a good one. You know, Absolutely. Don't Start Thinking I'm Alone Tonight is another song from the last one in the 80s, uh, Man in Motion. Love that song. It was released, uh, you know, as a single, but never, you know, did, never did anything because it was kind of like the record company was like, ah, go on. <laughs> I'm done with you, you know? So we were <laughs> like, ah, shoot, too bad. Well, I wasn't done with you guys at that time. <laughs> um, so I remember seeing you guys on Kiss Cruise 3, right? And uh, some of my friends that were on the cruise there knew the Night Ranger hits, but that was about it. And their perception of the band is that, hey, this is a ballad band. Yeah. And after the show, they were like, holy crap, this band really rocks. <laughs> you know, do you feel like that's a misconception of the band a little bit, that you guys are a ballad band? Sure, absolutely. And, and uh, you know, I think that um, uh, after a few, we got a few albums into it, we started to like, you know, like Man in Motion, the, the, the record we brought in, we turned the, the record in without a ballad on there. Yep. And they just laughed. They just said, come on, are you guys kidding me? You know, so we did. We went back and did the, uh, 
you know, like uh, Restless Kind. So, yeah. but they already had that one, the the one uh, with, uh, it was Russ Ballard. Ballard. <laughs> yeah, you know, already slated for that, you know. But it was it was weird. I mean, we got into the song because we wanted to be, a, you know, have, you know, team, you know, with the record company and the whole thing. We didn't want to just say, go, screw yourself. So we did the song. And I remember like some of the execs, they, they you know, I don't, for some reason, they didn't like what we did with it. But they still released it anyway. It was like, well, you know, it's not our song. Right. <laughs> in, intentionally try to, you know, sabotage it. We did the best we could with right, it. But, of course. It's not really a song that Night Ranger would write. Right. You know, we just wouldn't, you know. So maybe they got that from it, you know, but we tried to do our best. But they, they were like, I don't like what you did with that song. And I'm like, you know, they actually were pointing the finger at me. And I was wow. like, I was like, dude, give me a break. You know, it's like, like we did the best we could. We, we embraced the song. We brought it in there. I don't know why you guys wanted to do this because Restless Kind was a better song. Right. <laughs> but they, at that point, like I said earlier, like I think they were kind of like, okay, you know, we're done with you, you know. But, uh, <laughs> but I love that record. I, I wish it, it would have gotten more attention. Me too. So, you know, before you mentioned some of the upcoming concerts, I have tickets to go on Kiss Cruise 10. So I look forward to seeing you guys there this year. With the Delta variant, is there any concern right now that shows are going to be canceled for you guys? You know, what's funny is that we just played in Louisiana two days ago. So we left town and then the governor said, we're going to have masks. So, yes, we just went through a town. Who knows? You know, when you go through a town, if they're going to suddenly have this mandate. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we're very concerned. So now that means we're going to have to do a little more research, you know, before we go uh, places to make sure because we don't want to put anybody in danger yes. let alone ourselves right. you know and right. the crew and all that so we have to be careful yeah we're worried yeah and you know there's never a good time obviously for a pandemic but this spike coinciding right when the album is being released has to be like a oh you use the tour to promote the album yeah i know it's like it's like uh but you know uh hopefully you know if if anything does happen which I don't really believe it will. I think it'll it'll be controllable, you know, um, especially if they still allow people to come and wear masks. That's okay. Of course. I'm not going to spit it on anybody. <laughs> I swear. I won't. But, you know, promoting the album would be, you know, like uh, radio, YouTube, all that if we can't play. Right. So we'll just have to depend on those, those things, you know, but hopefully, you know, we're going to keep, keep going but we'll just have to keep an eye on it of course yeah no so last week was the sad news dusty hill passed away from zz top you guys actually toured with zz top for the eliminator tour right so what do you remember about that tour oh i just remember the, the, you know them asking us to to go on that tour and our second album was either just before or just released and we were like oh my god this is like the best news ever and those guys, you know, especially with that album, it was a little bit more pop, you know, and it was amazing. So that tour was great. We got on there and those guys, their sense of humor every night and just, you know, being in the dressing rooms and seeing those guys, it was incredible. You know, we traveled with them a few times and having you know, Dusty, you know, talk about his mom says, you know, he sings like Elvis, you know, <laughs> and having all of us go, what? You know, you know, and then he like look at us like, yeah, she thinks I sing like Elvis, you know. <laughs> We're like, yes, you do. <laughs> you know, I can argue with him, right? <laughs> that's right, that's right. Oh, my God. And then they had, you know, a commercial that they did uh, that had to do with Queen Bee Barbecue. And it was a local, I guess, uh, advertisement that they put together, that Billy put together. And he goes, check this out. You know, it was a, on a cassette. And we were like, he was, he was singing all the parts. Mm -hmm. It was like, you know, and and doing the, the commercial, come on down to Queen Bee Barbecue. And, you know, <laughs> ooh, barbecue. And he just did all the parts. And we were like, oh, my God, this guy is, you know, it's got everything going on. Mm -hmm. Like the, the sense of humor, you know, invention, you know, he's got, it's so creative. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was just great to see that day in and day out between the brothers, you know, those guys. Um you know, and the lyrics and just everything on stage, what they do. And 
it, amazing. Pro, by far, probably one of the best tours that we've ever done. Yeah. That's so cool. So, and that's one of the things I love about Night Ranger. So I talked about seeing you on the Kiss Cruise, right? Uh, Kiss, you know, it's been the headliner. Yeah. You guys have played with ZZ Top. Recently, you guys had um, Corey Taylor on stage with you from Slipknot. And you would think, Slipknot, Night Ranger? But it worked. <laughs> but it worked. Well, and his stuff is is more like what we do, a little more melodic, still heavy. But that's what the thing was about that, is that we really – I mean, I, come on. When you look at those videos of Slipknot, how can you not like that? Of course. Especially the audience is just so revved up. But there's no violence going on. The music is so heavy, angsty and stuff. I mean, I think – I, I mean, I like it, you know, I, I mean, I'm, I'm a, a heavy rock fan. So, but having Corey come up on stage and just, was such a surprise. We just, you know, we kind of like jokingly said, Hey man, why don't you want to come up and sing? And he goes, okay. <laughs> we were like, you're kidding, right? You know? And he goes, no, I'll be there. What do you want me to sing? Don't tell me you love me. Second verse. Okay. There you go. And it sounded great. You know, Get out of here, man. It was great. One or two more questions for you, if you don't mind. So first off, Obviously, you had a heart condition a few years ago, heart surgery. How have you been feeling from that? Fantastic. They did a great job. Dr. Rodriguez, the best. You know, uh, Edwards Life Science had such a team and all this stuff. And, you know, we, we called him up and, and uh, you know, my, my wife's uh, cousin. And we said, you know, where, where do, what, do, what should we do about this? Who, you know, who's going to take care of us the best? And they said, well... You know, Nashville, you know, which where I lived at the time, and we were like, are you kidding? He goes, no, nope, they got the best there. Or Chicago. Okay. You okay. you name it. Do you want to stay home or do you want to? So we went to uh, uh, Dr. Rodriguez at St. Thomas. And, um, boy, did he take care of me. It was great. I mean, and plus, you know, they're like, okay, you know, you're going to have to start walking, like, at 2 a.m. right after the they get oh, you wow. up. You're walking down the hall. It's like, let's see what happens. And I'm like, I'm like, oh my god, all hooked up and everything. It was amazing. I thought it was going to be the worst experience, and it turned out to be an incredible thing. To know what they did, they gave you all the details, what they were going to take care of you, and uh, they said you're healthy enough. You'll you'll jump out of this in six weeks, and you'll be able to go back in, start playing. That's what I did. You know, That's what you did. I just followed the instructions. Yes, sir. You know? <laughs> well, it's definitely great that you've been back, and, and I'm happy to hear that you're still healthy. Obviously, the band, all of us are getting older, right? Nobody's getting younger. Is there any talk ever about retirement, farewell tour, or something like that? I don't know why we would do that. We're having such fun, you know. And it's, uh, the last five years have just been a slow. Uh, climb to the uh, the new music that we've been doing. So until we don't want to do that, until we don't like playing anymore, which I don't see, it's not going to let up for a while. I think we're going to continue. Excellent. You know, thanks Excellent. for asking. No, that. no, I'm, I'm happy to hear this. So, like we said, the new the new album and the band played on. It's available to stream. It's available on CD. It's also available on different color vinyl. So if you're a vinyl collector, go check that out. Are you a vinyl collector? I am. I have a. Uh, I have plenty of vinyl over there. Got a lot of a lot of old records over there, and I play them <laughs> nice. constantly. Some of them can't even be played anymore. I played them so much when I was in <laughs> high school. I still have high school records, like like the band Free. Yeah. You know. I mean, I just like I still I have that band. I I thought that that was that was the vocal I, vocalist I wanted to kind of go after a little more R and B, Blue Eyed Soul. So. So that was Paul Rogers, man. That was that was he was my guy. Deep Purple, still have Deep Purple and rock that doesn't play. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> I mean, uh, yeah. So I'm I'm a I'm definitely going to get vinyl and, and see how it sounds on this one. Absolutely. Well, you know, definitely I suggest that fans go check it out on vinyl, check it out CD stream, buy the product because I know you guys don't get a lot of money from the streaming, right? So buy the product. Yeah, I appreciate that. Thanks so much, you know, because I think you get more out of it that way, you know. Absolutely. And definitely we'll be looking for you out on tour this summer, uh, this fall. And I'm hearing rumors that you might go out with Sammy Hagar next summer. So That's true. So, and, and it might be Whitesnake included Whitesnake. or not. We'll have to see, you know, because it's a ways out yet. But we'd like to keep the tour intact like it was. I think that was a good bill. And, uh, yeah, we, you know, uh, Kiss Cruise coming up in October. You know, we're going to be doing that. That's going to be great. Yeah, and we're just going to finish out some of the makeup dates that we're doing right now to, from last year and just keep rocking it, man. 
Awesome. Well, Kelly, this is an honor. Thank you. The new album is great. Fans should go out there and check it out. And much success with the album and the upcoming shows. Thanks a lot. I'll talk to you soon. Yes. I appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, Kelly. Take it easy. Bye-bye. All righty. There you have it. I'd like to thank Kelly for spending some time with me talking all about the new Night Ranger album, ATBPO, and the band played on. I highly recommend you guys check it out. I think you guys will really like it. I also enjoyed hearing some of those stories from Kelly about the good old days, including touring with ZZ Top. That was a lot of fun, Kelly. Thanks for sharing those stories with us. If you're watching this on YouTube, hit that subscribe button below. If you're listening to one of my podcasts, subscribe over there as well. Also, head on over to Facebook and follow my page, The Rock Experience with Mike Brunn, where each and every day we talk about all the rock and roll music that you love. You should also follow me on Instagram and Twitter as well. That's it for this episode. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. See you all next time.